Afternoon guys, and I'm back with something a little bit different, which is basically recognize you're going against the tax system. If you want to retire early, recognize that as your enemy. They'll always be your enemy. They'll pretend that your friends, and you should do this. You should bend over and just take it like a man. The reality is, though, well, they are overbearing and overreaching. The reason being is the higher echelons are avoiding like the plague. So as such, who do they target? The people in the middle, much easier. A bit like child support agencies, they go for the ones that pay, not the ones that don't. Um, now, it's in everything anyway. I mean, for example, if I take just Worcester and some of the stuff that goes on within local services, such as buses, you think, well, well what's a bus? Well, you can't get a return ticket before 9 a.m. Which means a lot of people will actually have a car because it's cheaper than the bus service. Well, there's a system that I'd call that a bit of a stealth tax, really, because they're overcharging you on bus tickets to get a premium. And yet, it's for work. You know, this is the thing. I mean, before 9 a.m., you're going to work. You know, you're not off, off to London for the day with the kids, are you? Um, but anyway, with the Philippines, if you're in a long-term relationship with somebody, I'm not talking about somebody who's online dating and never been in the Philippines. I'm talking about some people have access to the Philippines in the sense that they go regularly, they're 100% with the person they're with, um, and on top of that, you can actually build foundations and stuff. The first thing you've got to recognize is what ability somebody has. Sometimes it's a case of, like for example, we have apartments. So the apartments are already constructed, already paid for, generate monthly revenues, and the money just keeps going in the bank. We're now going to renovate the, the last couple of apartments, and then we're going to start banking money to buy another lot, to buy a piece of land so we can actually start building several houses to rent out as well. With the UK, everything I have they would be after like no tomorrow. Um, it's a bit like when I was with RBS Bank, um, where I was dealing with so an engineer's pay, because his pay was about twelve thousand pounds less than mine. But the difference between his and mine, just on the pay, was actually two hundred pounds a month. I got paid more than him by two hundred pounds, even though it was a twelve thousand pounds salary difference, because I pay a higher tax threshold. But then when you actually take into account things like um, he could actually have child benefit, I can't. And he'd have other benefits because over 50K you get hammered. And a lot of people think, oh, you're on big money with big tax. This is the thing I was saying earlier relating to when people say, well, uh, men are better off after a, their salary increases after divorce. But they're also paying alimony every month that isn't factored in because when the woman receives that, that's not a salary, that's, that's alimony. And the same with child benefits, not things that are taken out as payments to the ex-partner. So those are factored as expenses and as such, they're not seen, they just see the salary. They don't see the tax levels, they don't see the implications of what's where the money's actually going. It's not based on the spread of what's going out, what's coming in, is simply based on, oh, they earn more, and that's the only bit that's in there. The reason I'm bringing this up is I know a lot of you guys are trying to set yourself up to go to the Philippines, and there is stuff you can do to set that up before you arrive, long term. But you really need to have a relationship that is solid to do this. But you can actually do some stuff that the family's already doing already. or And some people will say, there's no money in doing this. There's no money. Well, a lot of people say that. But a lot of time, they don't run it as a business. Everything I do, I run as a business. as simple as that. You know, like if you're having a Sari Sari store, which is like a little corner shop, people say, oh, there's no money in it. Yet, you could be earning 10,000 pesos a month by selling beer out your window working out what's worth doing what's not for example if you're not selling enough beer is it worth having a fridge because the electricity on the fridge may actually outweigh the profit margins um, so you need to analyze things like a business 
in the same way there is also other opportunities out there the fireworks going off outside for some reason um, but there's other stuff that can go on relating to like like I had before the peso peso machines you've got five peso peso machines they make 250 pesos a day each um, they're just outside your house like an arcade machine and they just generate money then you've got apartment you can build rent out etc doing YouTube stuff you could put it in your partner's name if you're worried about the tax system you do the videos and the money goes into a bank account somewhere else there's loads of things you can be doing while you're setting yourself up to move over there but the advantage you got with doing a lot of this stuff is it's not directly coming out of your pocket and it's not directly associated with you which allows you to avoid paying the tax on things that ultimately the way I see it is you already pay tax on it what do I mean well if you have savings in the bank you leave there you pay tax on the interest on the top you pay tax on it but you already made that money and you made that money and paid tax on it when you earned it so why, should, why are you still giving them money on top of that periodically every year my version of this is to hell with them very simple the, you should be more active in moving stuff aside invention is doing something right with the, the bitcoin stuff for example but even that they're trying to work out how to justify getting their hands on people's um, Bitcoin and other crypto especially if they're trading because the reason being is they're saying well it's not really money because we don't really want it as a threat to fiat and a lot of the similarities are there but without some of their downside what do I mean you take fiat when the economy is tanking or whatever or for example um, the government wants to spend more money what do they do they print more that's it they just print it that means it's devalued everything in your pocket your house everything else when people go oh the house has gone up in value and it's like no the price has gone up but the value of the coin has actually gone down um, but ultimately you you're looking at with Bitcoin and whatever let's just concentrate on Bitcoin a lot of people don't know there's over 1200 different types of crypto out there um, but let's just say Bitcoin Bitcoin has a fluctuation in price without doubt that will stabilize over time this is why they're on about now being the important time um, the funny thing is I was reading an article the other day relating to the banking system and how they would like to phase in um, the investments from their clientele in the sense that the, the institutions would actually come in first so you imagine Bitcoin 6000 where it is today about 6100 so the institutions come in en masse with a lot of fiat they're dumping buy up Bitcoin it's now at 8000 then they want to bring in their private corporate accounts which will push it up again and then they'll bring in all the other corporations again then small business then the last person to come in is general public now general public is not buying it six thousand he's buying it fifteen or twenty thousand per coin that's how <laughs> that's how the corporations and banks work and the funny thing is actually there was in the actual article justifying this is how it would encourage banks and everything to come in to the markets which is basically fleece everybody else at the end of the day let them come in first so they can inflate all the price and then they can double or treble their money at the cost of the taxpayers because what people forget is these are not these are not governments these are companies these are companies that are dictating to governments what they want to do but what I'm saying to people is recognize that the only person on your side if you go into our little grouping here is yourself if you don't look after yourself nobody else will and ultimately setting up things like um, a small store that generates you an extra hundred dollars a month doesn't sound a lot does it 
but at the end you use that if you've got like eight years till you're actually fully retired or whatever and you're contracting in and out you can use that money to buy something else and then it's no longer a hundred it's 150 and then it's no longer 150 it's 300 um, and then you get to the point where you start to build apartments or whatever and suddenly it's no longer hundreds it's a thousand or two thousand a month and suddenly the pension that you're working so hard to gain from the state or whatever is actually worth way less than you're actually earning through your small adventures that are outside of your tax radar. Thanks for watching.